Hi students, so this is just a quick video, uh, I guess video tutorial for the modeling activities this week. Um, just quickly, uh, if you lose the links to the specific models, I've just sort of set up a page on my website, isagula.github.io slash models. And then I'll list all the models we're going to use in class here, so you can just bookmark this page and, uh, and you can always find your way. This week, we have the two models you can choose from, the buffalo hunting extinction model or the grazing model. So when you click on them, they'll load up in a new tab. So we have them here. Uh, so what I want you to focus on this week is uh, coming up with a series of formal modeling experiments. And in particular, what I want you to do is to um, consider how the models were actually developed they follow that deductive reasoning path, meaning that they're based in theory and the model itself is a formalism of the mechanics of how the theory purports that the world might work. And again, it's simplification, in some cases a gross simplification, but they're not based on data points. They're not regression modeling from actual empirical data. So in that case, what the difference is, is that you ought to be able to formulate hypotheses based on the theory of how the model is supposed to work and your initial experience of doing some informal experiments with it um, to come up with a formal experiment where you set up a series of experiments that are logically arranged and developed to test the veracity of that hypothesis. So just briefly, here's the grazing model. You can get a little insight into how the model was developed by clicking on the model info and just reading the what is it, how it works, how to use it, and some of the other stuff in here. And to summarize, essentially, this is uh, sort of based on um, that sort of grazing revolution hypothesis, the idea that if we stock animals, maybe even high at higher rates than we think is typically sustainable, if we manage them in a certain way, they're contributing manure, they're pawing at the ground, they're changing the energy flow in a net positive way, right? So that's essentially what we're monitoring here. We have a, a, a small number of sliders with uh, cows, sheep, and chickens. They each have their own kind of behavior. You can read about it down here. We have two different styles of energy transfer, linear and nonlinear and then one plot about the mean environmental energy. So you can just move the sliders around to change the numbers of you know, the individual uh, species, hit setup and go, and it will play forward. You can see the darker the patch, the more energy, so the, the, the nicer the grass is, the lighter the patch, the less energy, and when it turns white, it's been essentially overgrazed. So I'm gonna stop that uh, just because I don't want the screen to freeze up when I have my webcam on, oftentimes it does. So you can play around with various combinations and come up with a hypothesis to test. So for example, you could see that cows are a heavier grazer, but they produce more manure. But perhaps the hypothesis is that it's more efficient to combine uh, some number of cows with some number of chickens because they complement each other. So you can read again in the theory of how that actually works. And then you set up a series of formal experiments where you step through um, explicitly a certain number of variables on the cow slider and on the chicken slider. So let's say you want to do six experiments. You put three numbers of cows. You have maybe 10 cows in the first one, and then 20 cows, and then 30 cows. And then the chickens, you could start with 20 chickens and combine that with 10, 20, and 30 cows. And then you could do like 60 chickens or something like that and combine that with 10, 20, 30 cows. So that gives you six experiments to run. If you did more than that, let's say you wanted to go from 60 chickens to 100 chickens, you'd have to combine that with 10, 20, 30 cows, which would give you nine experiments. So you can see the more stops on the sliders and the more sliders you choose the greater the number of experiments that you're going to have to run. My suggestion is to keep it somewhere between six and nine experiments because it's going to get very unwieldy afterwards. You have to analyze the, the results each time. Um, so 
that is one potential set of experiments, but you could do it with just cows and sheep. You could do it linear, nonlinear. You have to read through, see what seems interesting to you, run a few informal experiments to see that the model behavior will be interesting. And you have to make sure that you've chosen a wide enough range of variables to capture the behavior change that you might be interested in documenting. So in, case, in this case, it could be that it's not until you get over 100 chickens that the nutrient cycling ramps up to the level that your hypothesis would say. And if you didn't cross that threshold in your formal experiment, then you can't totally disprove the hypothesis, right? So you may need to do some either some more informal testing beforehand, or you may need to come up with a second round of formal experiments with a, with a wider suite of ranges and report on those. Now, the grazing model is pretty simple and straightforward. There's a very few number of sliders. If we go to the buffalo model, the hunting and extinction buffalo model, there's a greater number of sliders. And I invite you to read through here where I've sort of documented how it works. But here the theory is a little bit more explicit. It's based on optimal foraging theory, which is the idea that a forager has to make a choice when they encounter an animal in the environment, whether they're gonna pursue that animal, hunt it, kill it, skin it, cook it, and then eat it, or they're gonna let that animal go and continue looking for another animal in hopes that they're gonna find an animal with a bigger payoff. And essentially each animal has a density out there in the environment and it has a processing cost, the amount of time it's going to take to hunt, uh, kill, and cook after it's initially encountered, and then a food value, how much energy you get when you consume the animal. And so here you can set those values. We're sort of separating here, we're focusing on one species with a male and a female counterpart. And that's important because we're talking about a sexually dimorphic species. So in our case, these are buffalo, cape buffalo, and uh, the females are slightly smaller body size than the males. The males are therefore a little bit harder to hunt because they're dangerous. Uh, the females, being smaller body size, have a slightly less food payoff, but they're easier to hunt down because they're a little less hazardous. And there's a bunch of other stuff you can set, the proportion, uh, you know, the way they reproduce. They only reproduce when they run into each other in this particular model. Uh, how long they live in ticks, how much food they get when they graze the grass, um, actually whether or not you want the, the grass to grow or not, how long it takes to grow back after it's grazed, uh, how much energy it takes for them to move around and when they start to starve and then die from starvation, which adds an environmental component. So you may not want the environmental component, so you might want to turn that off by just picking the one without. Uh, without the dynamic grass where the grass is just you know given that there's grass for them to eat. You may want to increase or decrease the number of hunters on the landscape, increase or decrease the density of prey on the landscape. Um, and this is going to change the search cost, the amount of time it takes for the hunter to actually encounter one of these animals. And then you can change the sliders for how long it takes to hunt them down and kill them and cook them or how much food you get from them. And a hypothesis that you could test would be that uh, hunters are avoiding the dangerous males and going after the females, but only if the females have a certain payoff value. So you could change the processing costs of males and the food value of females in a formal experiment. Let's say you did three stops here and three stops here. Hopefully at some point in your output plots, the prey taken males and females. I'll just show you how that, um, how that might look. You can see these plots. You can see males and females. You can see whenever they take a male or a female. And you can actually see the number of males and females total here. You will start to see a crossover where they'll start to preference uh, females over males. And in this case, they did that right over here. And when you kill too many females, you make it impossible for this, that species to breed and produce offspring, and so they go extinct, okay? And so you may wanna, this is an example of an experiment that you could run uh, between these two things, and you wanna find that threshold. And if you run your formal experience, you don't find the threshold, you may need to expand you know, the um, values that you, that you choose to include a wider range of food values, or processing costs, 
or you may need to run another set of experiments or you may just conclude that it doesn't happen in the model and your hypothesis is not correct. So uh, essentially uh, that's the workflow that I want to see you put into practice. Uh, read the theory about how the model should work, experiment with it to get a sense of the, its behavior, set up the formal modeling experiments, and then report on the findings and particularly try and find one of these threshold events where until you moved the sliders into a certain combination, you didn't get the behavior that was either predicted or not predicted by your hypothesis.